Hi everyone, how's it going? Oh, I'm getting double vision all over the place, forgive me. Um, oh my God, my eyes look awful. Oh, Jesus, can you see this? It looks like one side of my face is sloping downwards. Like, oh, it's a sight. It's a bloody sight, this is. But anyway, how are you guys doing? Um, I just wanted to actually come online to ask other TIs how they've been doing because it's been a while since I've spoken to you. And I feel like, you know, there is progress being made in the TI community. Uh, we got Roy, he recently did his interview with Raquel. Um, you know, there are some TIs who seem to be in the same position, like just feeling the most, just being terrorised every day. And then there are others of you who are getting on with life, coping. So let me know in the comments how you guys are doing. I really, really want to know how you guys are doing because it's just, it's it's been a quiet one for me. Well, relatively quiet. Um, since that argument with my loved one, it's actually been like, I've been quiet. But as always when we get to this part of the targeting where I start to get used to the harassment and stuff and I start getting on with my life because it's clearly obvious that the perps are not going to stop harassing me, um, you know, that's when the perps start to go mad and lose their goddamn minds. Uh, again, it's it's not my first rodeo. It's going to happen. And I realised that with my mental health, my mental health ha has absolutely no bearing on how the perps are going to behave. Now, when it came to my dad's neighbours, right, my dad's neighbours did the same thing. But the thing is, it's or they almost had a reason for it because I was literally talk thinking out loud for hours sometimes. And when you're in a situation in the same room as a person that's thinking out loud to themselves, you don't know what they're going to do. So my dad's neighbours had to put up with that. I don't feel sorry for them because they're still trafficking pieces of shit, still murdering pieces of shit, but they had to put up with hours of self-talk from somebody. Me, people in my dad's community, my dad's neighbours had to put up with hours of self-talking. Whereas here, people are doing the same thing. They're losing their minds. They're engaging in bullying behaviour when nothing is going on. But this is exactly why it kind of illustrates why as a targeted individual, it doesn't matter what your mental health is doing. If you're not reacting how the perps want you to react, they're going to go off. They're going to lose their minds. They're going to turn into people that they never wanted to be. That's just how it's going to happen. And it always happens. That's why I haven't been reacting up until now, because it's something that I'm used to. I see it all the time. Do you understand what I'm saying? But it's just, you know, it's just one of those things where you just get used to everything after a while. You get used to everything and it nothing phases you. Um, the perps are doing this new thing of having somebody in black, like, I talked about what the little boy was doing before. So now they're having grown adults do the same thing, only the grown adults are dressed in black. So when I walk out, there's at least one person, either from this estate or from the nail shop, walking out in black, either just a little bit ahead of me or like just behind me, but always close by, right? And... Let's be absolutely clear. The point of that is not surveillance. It is, it's never surveillance. It's always to try and intimidate you. But I think what's happening is, is that the community that I'm in right now, a lot of people are scared. And on the one hand, I'm thinking, OK, I get it. Uh, you're not used to a certain amount of conflict, even if you are involved in this program, which is essentially murdering and trafficking a person. You're not used to this this sort of high stress situation. There are a lot of stakes involved in what you're doing. You're having to lead a double life. There are so many people in this community having to lead double lives. It's a stressful situation to be in. So I don't 
on the one hand, I don't blame any of these people for being scared. But on the other hand, I'm like, you know, what are you scared for? Because at the end of the day, right, you have the law on your side. It's me who's been diagnosed paranoid schizophrenic. It's me who basically has everybody turning on her, friends, family, all of that. I'm I'm the one who's on my own and I'm the one who's being murdered in traffic, essentially. So what, what the hell are you scared of? It's not like I can turn around and do that to you. You know what I mean? It, it's not like I can turn around and do that to you. So really and truly, like, what are you scared of? What are you afraid of? People are calling me intimidating and frightening and all the rest of it, but it hasn't frightened anybody into backing off this program because guess what? I'm just one person. On top of that, a black person. Up on fucking racist mountain. I'm not being funny, right? What, what is one person going to do against the swarm of bees? Get the fuck out of here. And you're scared? Of what? If you, if one of you murdered me, and I'm not talking about slow kill torture or none of that stuff. If one of you murdered me tonight, ain't no police coming after your ass. Ain't nobody charging you. So why are you, why are you worried? Why are you scared? Unless you know that what you're doing is wrong. And unless you know the gravity of what you're engaging in, why would you be scared? It just doesn't make any sense. Ain't nobody about to be scared of nobody who's paranoid schizophrenic because what are you going to learn from that person? I've been diagnosed paranoid schizophrenic, remember? So what are you scared of? I'm here by myself. The only two people that have come to my flat, no, actually, four people have come to my flat. None of them have been my family members. What are you afraid of? Unless there's something going on that you're a part of, that you know is corrupt and that you know is out of pocket, what exactly are you scared of? I don't get it. Unless you're scared that everything that I said is the truth and everything that I said has come to pass, unless you're scared about that, I can't see what you'd be intimidated by. That's why when people say, oh, you know, oh, you just want to scare people. That makes me fucking laugh because I'm like, you're ganging up on me. The fuck you scared of? Grow some nuts for God's sake. And it's not even just the neighbours around here. It's people online as well. You're just trying to frighten people. You're frightening people out of what? You're frightening yourself. <laughs> the fuck out of <laughs> Come on, man. Like, imagine people paid to stalk you, harass you, shred your nerves every single second of your life complaining about how scared they are. Couldn't be me. And meanwhile, I've got this situation going on. I swear that has something to do with the with the fucking targeting. There's no way in hell. Why do, why does half my face look like it's melting? Get the fuck out of here, man. I've got electronic torture to deal with. On top of that, I've got electronic torture to deal with. The, the scared where? What the, what? I cannot. It's so pathetic. I can't. Guys, I can't. And in the meantime, like people are really wearing black trying to make me as scared as they are. It's not going to work. I already made my bargain. I already made up my mind as to what my life was going to be about. I already, I, I've already done it. There's nothing left to be said. There is nothing left to be done. The only reason I'm even talking right now is because I want to know how my fellow TIs are doing. And I want to give them something that they can relate to. That's the only reason I'm even talking right now. Other than that, there's nothing left to say. There's nothing left to say.
Less man, if you're gonna traffic and murder somebody, you you better do that shit in peace. <laughs> Don't try and fucking act like you're the victim in the situation. You better do that shit. If you're gonna traffic and murder somebody, traffic and murder somebody in peace. Or don't fucking do it. Or you can leave innocent people alone. Oh, well, I, I wouldn't call myself innocent. I'll get to that in a minute. But I wouldn't call myself innocent. But you could leave people alone. You could stop this cruel and unusual punishment shit with people who never earned it. Or you can continue suffering having your soul squirming while you make up your fucking minds. But pick a side, stick to it, and stop victimizing yourselves. It's pathetic. I also wanted to talk to you guys about, um, there was this video that I saw on narcissists. And speaking as somebody that is a victim of narcissistic abuse every day, is it me or does narcissistic abuse seem to be depicted as cartoony? Because the thing about narcissists and sociopaths and, and psychopaths, I mean, using clinical terms for an insult is something that a lot of us like to do when something somebody does something shitty. But for me, it's... It's now that I've gotten older and now that I've started to understand the complexities of how the brain functions and why people do what they do. It's only now that I'm starting to understand it that I realize how childish that is to try to paint like, you know, paint the dark triad as, you know, these horned devils. I, I know I know there's evil in the world. Believe me. Nobody knows better than a T.I. how limitless and how relentless cruelty and evil can be. But it's a lot more complicated than just. Do you know what I mean? It's a lot more complicated than somebody just smirking with two horns on their head. It's not as simple as that. Like, ew, empathy. Like, no, that's not how villainy is. That's not what evil is like. The only way to really understand evil is to understand the evil in ourselves and I'm not talking about our individual flaws I'm talking about the evils that we all commit every day because it's very easy for somebody with less developed brains than yourselves to take those same evils that you do even further it's a very easy thing to do and in the meantime, the reason why they've done it is either their emotion, emotions are overwhelming them so they've completely shut down or they could be born with naturally underdeveloped brains in the first place. So really what we're looking at, like somebody tried to point out to me years ago that it's problematic to, you know, call someone evil or what have you. I, I still think that's bullshit, but to kind of make out like abusers are just these cartoon characters who, you know, who like, you know, just want to hurt people. No, it's all about control. You know, the way abusers act is the same way that a toddler acts when they don't get what they want. Toddlers are not developed yet. And I'm not saying that as an insult. I'm saying that as, I'm, I'm genuinely saying that from a place of empathy. I can relate because when I've done certain things wrong in my life, it's like it's like there was something empty, like I wasn't in, it's like I'm not in the room. It's like there's someone else there, even though it's me doing all that shit. So I have to be accountable for what I've done in my life. But when you're doing something genuinely evil to someone, you are in a disconnected place. You're not here. And all you can see is what you want because it's a desperation. There's a desperation there. There's a desperation that you only see in people that are very young and have underdeveloped brains. It's literally a child's way of processing things. There's no right. There's no wrong. There's no morality. There is only the objective and nothing else. Because... To take your mind away from that. Because the thing is, human emotion is a weird thing. When you're dealing with so many different emotions at once, 
If they don't have a place to focus, it can split your mind. That's why there are so many self-help books talking about, oh, how to be focused, how to concentrate, all these things. Because when you have emotions swirling around like that, so many different emotions at once, if they don't get a focal point, your brain will just split in multiple different directions. That's why the focus is there. That's why we have toddlers who, when they have emotions that are too complex to understand, they will put it down to not getting what they want. People with antisocial personality disorders do the same thing. When there are all these emotions inside them that they can't fucking process, they shut down. So the empathy is gone. The sympathy is gone. There is only what they want. But that in and of itself is not a cartoony thing. It's not a Hollywood narrative. It is something that is severely, there's something severely damaged in the person when they do that. That's why when I think about my abusers now, I don't think of them as fucking cartoon characters anymore. I will call them cunts. I will call them cunts and gaping fucking inflated assholes. I will do that. Don't get, don't get it twisted. I will cuss them the fuck out. I have no qualms about doing that shit. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, I can't say in my heart of hearts that I don't understand where they're coming from. I can't say that in my heart of hearts. I cannot say that in my heart of hearts because there are times where when I've done something wrong, in the moment, I'm not seeing the morality in my actions. I'm not seeing the emotions in my actions. I'm not seeing empathy. I'm not seeing fucking sympathy for nobody. I'm just seeing what I'm doing and how I feel about it. Do you understand what I'm saying? But who knows how I made the other person feel? So I can relate to how people do wrong and they're too traumatized to want to deal with it because it's like whilst you were doing it, you weren't here. You're not fucking here. Either you're not here or you're there, but your emotions have, have shut down. So painting narcissists, I think, as cartoon characters and, you know, and treating them as other and treating them. It's nice to it's nice to comfort yourself with when there's a a situation where you need a tribal sense of togetherness with other people who have suffered the same thing as you. It's good for tribalism, but it's not actually good for getting out of an abusive situation. In order to get out of evil and get out of an abusive situation without making yourself feel like shit, you have to actually be able to identify the evil in yourself. That's not to say that you need to blame yourself for how people are treating you. You don't need to do that. You don't need to blame yourself for what somebody else did. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't need to, just like anybody that I've hurt in my life, they don't need to blame themselves for what I did. Now, I, I, I exclude the perps in that conversation. But anyone who wasn't a perp that I have hurt, they don't need to blame themselves for what I did. I did what I did. They did what they did. And if there was anyone who was undeserving, they don't need to blame themselves for what, for me. There is no way they need to do that. Because at the end of the day, I'm responsible for my actions. They're not responsible for my actions. Right? So it's important that you do not use the humanization of your abusers and of your enemies to blame yourself. Because let's be fucking real, okay? If somebody wants to be abusive or somebody wants to hurt you, they can hurt you. They can fucking do it. And they will fucking do it. And I'd be willing to bet that they've done it before. The reason why you humanize your enemies, though, or you look inside your own evil in order to understand them, is so that when you get out, you get out fucking clean. When you get out, you get out clean. You get out with, you know, your understanding of your trauma from a healed place. That's the whole point. When you humanize the other, you humanize yourself. Because what we tend to do is we tend to see the worst parts of ourselves and people we don't like. So when you humanize that part, 
Um, you're supposed to humanize people that you like too, by the way. This is not just something that you do for your enemies. You humanize the people that you don't like. You stop turning them into a cartoon character or an archetype and you start seeing them for who they are. You are giving yourself that same grace, low key. Low key, you're giving yourself that same grace. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're giving yourself the same grace of, you know, you're giving yourself the same grace of um, recognizing the evil in yourself or recognizing the wrong in yourself. And you're forgiving yourself by humanizing them. You ain't got to forgive them. That's a different enterprise. But when you humanize them, and you accept that's the very important thing this is the thing that this is the thing that people don't understand how to accept i'll get to that in a minute when you humanize the other person's flaws and you accept those flaws it gives you the strength to walk away now the reason i say that is because this is what i notice about really toxic relationships okay now a lot of people say that when you're in a toxic relationship, um, the person on the receiving end of the toxicity will usually walk away when they don't love the person anymore. That's not always true. That isn't always true. Love liberates. Sometimes when you have two toxic people in a relationship and one is avoidant and the other one's clingy, the clingy person will walk away and it's not because they don't love the avoidant person anymore. It's because they do love the avoidant person, but love gives you dignity. Love actually liberates you from your abuse. You know, when you stay in an, when you stay in an abusive situation, it feels like love, but it isn't. It's simply you know, you staying in the same situation and you feeling, you know, it's simply you having your dopamine manipulated. That's what it is. That's why you're staying. It's not, it's not because of love. When you truly love, when you truly love the people who have damaged you and you truly humanize them, that's when you have the strength to walk away. Because love is something that, again, it gives you dignity. True love is dignity. And that's exactly what it gives you. That's exactly what it gives you. You know? True love is dignity. You're not willing to stay there and put up with, put up with crap from somebody that you genuinely love. You expect them to be better because you love them. So when you humanize your abusers and you kind of, you know... When you humanize your abusers or you humanize your enemies, you love them enough to you basically walk away from them. That's, that's essentially what you end up doing. And a lot of people are going to say, oh, no, you can feel I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. All right. I've gone through enough in my life to know what love is and know what love isn't. Love, true love will enable you to walk away from a toxic situation. Seeing your narcissist, you know, abusers or your sociopathic abusers or your psychopathic abusers as villains and nothing more. Again, it's satisfying and it's something that is actually necessary to your evolution. So I will never write that shit off completely, but it's important not to be stuck in that angry teen mentality because it stops you from growing. It stops you from evolving. And it also stops you from walking away from the abuse because then you end up sticking around for revenge. You end up sticking around so that you can use your very presence as a way to hurt them because it is hurting them. Giving people who abuse you an avenue to keep abusing you is hurting them too because it's hurting their karma. They're not getting any better. It's hurting their karma. It's hurting their... You know, it's hurting their karma. It's hurting their emotional health. You know, the satisfaction that you get from hurting someone is cheap. It's not real. It's fucking cheap. 
And the problem with cheap satisfaction is that you need more of it in order to get, in order to feel satisfied, but it never lasts. It just keeps going. It just keeps going. So it's only when you truly love something that you can walk away from it when it gets, when it gets toxic. You know, when you are in the same relationship, you don't even realize it. Either you want, you want revenge, you want a chance to avenge what you're going through, or you want a chance to fix something that you think is broken. When really all you're doing is being exploited by staying in that same situation. There was something I was going to come back to. I can't remember what it was. Love liberates. I can't remember what I was going to say now. Yeah. You don't have to forgive. You really don't. People talk about forgiveness so much and it's like, you have to forgive. No, you don't. <laughs> you do not. Just because you humanize your abusers, it doesn't mean you have to forgive them. You don't. You do not have to forgive anybody. You are not obligated. Especially if you're a targeted individual, for fuck's sake. You're not obligated to forgive anybody. But somebody told me, humanizing them, understanding things with their position. At first, it's not, at first, it's not healthy for you to do. At first, you need to other them just enough to distance them from you emotionally. And once they're distanced, that's when you should humanize them. No mean. But yeah, I, I I just think that it's very irresponsible to paint a cartoony version of narcissists that you know, because if you have enough videos or enough media that is just painting these people as narcissists, you know, painting these narcissists or these sociopaths or these psychopaths as just villains and nothing more, just like cartoony bad guys, pantomime villains. You paint them that way. You know, when we keep having media that paints them that way, it's appealing to our lowest common denominator as victims. And it's also denying us our humanity. It's denying the people we love their humanity. Because the people that we like and the people that, you know, that do really lovely things for us, we have to humanise them too. We can't just humanise our enemies. We've got to humanise the ones who love us. We can't put them on a pedestal. We have to humanise them. If you've got a crush, you, you know, their, their attractiveness makes your libido tingle. You've got to humanise them too. <laughs> you've got to humanise them too. You've got to humanise... You know, the people that make your day better automatically just by being in their presence. You've got to humanize them as well because they do have a dark side. But it's kind of like you have to recognize, you know, the good in yourself to see it in them. And that's how you humanize them. And then you think to yourself, how would I feel if somebody was idolizing me like that? OK, I wouldn't feel good. Let's let's change it up. Let's switch it up. You know what I mean? Humanize, humanize yourself, humanize your enemies, humanize your friends. Don't turn them into archetypes because that does not help you. All it does is split your personal identity into two groups and you don't need that. It's, it's slowing down your evolution as a person. And if you're a victim of abuse, and trafficking, or you've been a been a victim of abuse and trafficking, you othering people is just slowing down your evolutionary growth. Don't let don't let don't let this world pander to you and feed bullshit in your ear. Don't let them do it. Don't let them do it. Don't let them do it because there's strength inside you. And when you recognize that strength, you become a fully fleshed human being as well. And that's what these 
you know, these videos and these things don't get empath and narcissist. Like, get the fuck out of here. Both are maladjusted and selfish. It's just they reveal those things in different ways. Like, take me for instance, right? There's, it's, I always say the same thing, right? There's spirit's plan and then there's the human's plan. The human's plan might be one thing, but spirit's plan is another. When it comes to me now, what I have learned is that spirit will put in my path people who reflect my internal self. And I know that sounds weird. I know it sounds weird to say, but one way or another, it doesn't matter if it's perps. It doesn't matter if it's like, you know, people that I do like, people that I don't. They will always put in front of me people that are representations of myself. Everybody goes through this. They are always surrounded by people that are mirror images of themselves to remind them, this is what you have to learn. Do you understand what I'm saying? And we all have that. We all have that inside us. We, You know, the, their spirit's plan... And then there's a human's plan. The human's plan is, is fucking, it pales in comparison to spirit's plan. It doesn't matter who you are and what situation you're in. You're going to be surrounded by people who mirror either how you feel on the inside or the lessons that you need to learn on the inside. And I realized that's the same case with me. Like, forget all the, sup the superficial stuff, the superficial stuff of um, race, whether or not they're TIs or perps, like forget all that, right? What am I supposed to learn from the people that are doing this to me and from the from my community, the communities that I found myself in? What am I supposed to learn from this? And I've realized throughout the years, there's a lot that I've learned from the people that are trafficking and murdering me, as much as there are people that I've learned from people who, you know, who have genuinely liked and respected me which is many but you know I've learned a lot and I'm still learning from the people who have done this to me and the people who haven't done this to me I've learned a lot from everyone and I've learned what parts of myself are present in the people he, who keep showing up in my life the parts of myself that I hide and I try not to admit they're right there through the people that are surrounding me, good and bad. And this is regardless of whether the gang stalkers meant it or not. Because people usually behave the opposite to how they really are. Damn it. And that's also important to learn as an abuse victim, you know, you're never going to be as bad as, as the people torturing you, you're never going to be as bad as the people who are abusing you, it's very rare that the people who are tortured and abused and murdered end up being as bad as their, as their abusers, it's very rare, but the clue to how you're treated as a person, it lies in your motives. It lies in your motives. And sometimes when your motives are revealed to you by the extremes of other people's actions, that's a call to action, to take whatever flaw is present inside yourself and to utilize that to your advantage rather than running away from it. And that's exactly what I've learned. That's exactly what I've learned. You know, there's so much, there's so much of, so much of life we don't understand. And this is coming from somebody who used to really look down on nuance and think nuance was for cowards. Now I'm just like, nah, man, nuance isn't for cowards. It takes a developed mind to understand it. It's important to understand nuance. 
Because then when you make decisions, you make informed decisions. And you can't do that when you're led by your fear all the time. Anyway, i got to go. Um, I'm about to have another solo party up in here. I'm going to watch a stupid movie. I'm going to, like, I don't know, do alchemical equations. I don't know what the fuck. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to chill out. I'm just going to chill out, eat dumb food, drink plenty of water, watch a stupid movie, you know, probably look at my newest crush or something. <laughs> Because I have another one. I have I have one about like every 10 years or something. This one will probably last six months before I move on. But anyway. Yeah, I, I'm just going to have fun. Relax. Enjoy. I've got an engineer coming tomorrow to look up my washing machine. So that's going to be very exciting. And um, yeah. That's it, I guess. Anyway. I love you guys very much. Peace and blessings. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye.